Okay, the stories continue. We've now hooked up with Juan Wardian. This is your farm here. How many acres do you have here? I just have 75 acres of almond trees, and then I just have a follow 75 acres more. So this would normally be planted in what? We was used to plant when we have enough water, we used to have tomatoes, melons, onions, garlic, and all different kind of crops, vegetables, more important things. That's what we have right here before. Nothing here today. Nothing here right now. And how many people would be employed here working these fields? Years ago, we would use, uh, say, normally the, on 150 acres, but uh, seasonally, about three months, about uh, 10, 15 guys. And uh, after we do that, we just cut them down in half. But right now, we didn't have any. None? None. Because I just take care of myself because I have no money to keep going farming the way I'm supposed to be. Okay, now we earlier today saw some almond trees being torn out, plowed under. Yours are still here, but they're not doing well, are they? It didn't do well because we didn't, we didn't have the, the right kind of water we're supposed to have on the trees. You're supposed to get water normally from the California aqueduct. Yes. You didn't get any this I didn't this get year. any this year. Where is the water coming That's from? That water has come from the well from my neighbor. So do the neighbors help each other out? We, have, we work with each other because we have to be supposed to be that way. So you're keeping enough water on these trees. Yes, to keep those trees alive because the crop is here. It's, it's, not, it's not the one supposed to be like, it's supposed to be better. It's not a good it's crop It's not a good year. crop this year. So you're just watering to keep the trees alive. Yes. That's the, that's the more important thing. We expect in the future we're going to have some water, I hope. That's why we kept the trees alive. Wow. That's a terrible this year, but nothing we can do. We just have to keep going that way. As we are still looking for somebody to help us to have water because if we don't have enough water for the one we need to grow, what we need, there's going to be disaster all over. It's going to be bad, bad, bad. Well, this was your dream to have this farm, wasn't I just come, it? I just come from Mexico uh, 40 years ago. I just kind of worked for two farmers, and then I just tried to work as much as I can, try to save a little bit of money, because my dream when I come from Mexico is to have something for my kids. And this was it. And this, so this, the, uh, I get lucky and I have this property, I own, I'm the owner, but we have a big problem right now. Now we've come to a place, to a situation that really points out how severe the water shortage is here in Fresno County. Sean Colburn is a farmer here. You grow all kinds of crops here. Usually your water comes from where, Sean? Normally most of our water comes from the California aqueduct. Good, clean, fast flowing California aqueduct water. Yeah, good, good quality water, most definitely. This year, how much of your water is coming from the California aqueduct? This year we have a 10% federal allocation in Western Fresno County. 10%? 10%, yeah. So what are you having to do? And that's what we're seeing behind us here. Well, nor normally, Wells are an insurance policy that you use to get through some, some tight years. This year at 10%, we're having to rely on well water. Uh, this well water that we're pumping right now is going through the filter station, which you can see over here. Now, why is it going through a filter? You don't have good well water here, do you? No, the, the, the water's deep and the quality's pretty bad. Very salty. L a lot of salt, so you don't, high in boron. You don't usually use well water. Our usual use of well water is when we have surface water to blend with to get through a tight spot. But this, this, uh, this, this is a spot that we can't get out of. Yeah. Now I see Juan over here. We just talked with Juan. He's your neighbor. He's using well water just to keep his almond trees alive. You're using it and pumping it where? Uh, we're using this well water right now. It's going through the filters and it's going about a half mile to the north. Over there, you can see in the distance. And uh, those are drip tomatoes over there. So you're having to bring it out of the well over here, ship it all the way down there to grow your tomatoes. To grow my tomatoes. I actually have wells that uh, we're moving water 
uh, with above ground surface pipe over five miles just to try to get it to the fields that have the crops that need the water now. So this really is a crisis. Am I overstating it? Am I being too dramatic to call it a crisis situation? No, it's it's not. It's yeah, one more year of this, and and you'll see a a, a whole bunch of farm farmland, valuable farmland, go out of production. Because you never thought you'd be go into this extreme to get water, did you? You can only, you can only rely on, on groundwater for so long. But whether you're on the east side or the west side of Fresno County, there is a limit to how much water that you can pull out of the ground. And then you add the added factor of the bad quality, uh, you know, it's it's a slow death for the tomatoes and it's a slow death for the almonds. It's a, it's a slow death for every, every kind of crop you try to grow on it. It's a slow death for agriculture in this state. Well, that, that's the thing. If, it, if this was Hurricane Katrina, which it is, you have to think of it this way. It's a, it's a hurricane, but it's moving at about a half mile an hour. Just a real slow, insidious d death spiral. That's that's what we're going through out here right now. We're this 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 well is is the last the last thing I can do. We we spent seven hundred thousand dollars on this last well, uh, and I can't get a bank to even loan me uh, loan me money for any more wells. They've so just this given is up. it. This is it. Now this is interesting. We're driving down the road. I was looking out at this land over here to our right and Sean and I said, this wasn't farmland, was it? This doesn't look like a field. And what did you say? No, this is all farmland. This, all this land you see out here in front of you I, I still has the delivery system uh, to, to deliver water from the aqueduct uh, that underground it brings the water to the field. It's all so here. This, this was a field. This was a, a an active growing field that would grow what? Uh, every kind of crop you could imagine. I mean, there's over 300 crops grown in, in the Central Valley and we can grow all of them out here. Now, how many years has it been since a field like this has been active? It looks like it's been inactive for a number of years. This area here, about four years ago, they started to move the water out of here to take care of trees and vines and things that couldn't go without water. But like I said, you know, you can see the actual delivery system is still in place. It's just they're not farming it anymore. They're rearranging the water. Uh, well, dealing with the crisis that is no surface water, they are not farming this ground anymore because there's no water to farm it with. Wow. And this is, look, as far as you can see in on both sides of the road, it's just empty, empty land. Yeah, in this area here, a lot of the farmers, because farmers are stewards of the land, they planted a cover crop to try to keep the, the soil from eroding. Uh, so you can see out here, this, this is actually a barley crop that they tried to grow with just the rainwater to conserve their soil. Didn't work. Well in, in this, well, in the sense that they created the cover crop to at least protect the soil from erosion, but there's no, they're trying to protect their asset. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to protect their asset that maybe someday there'll be a fix in this water deal and we'll be able to get back to doing what we do, which is growing food for people. Joe, we've hooked up with you in your field, in your cantaloupe field, it's being harvested. We're actually seeing a crop being harvested and people working, but even this is not all good news, is it? No, it's not. Uh, we have a cantaloupe crew here picking cantaloupes and uh, Typically, we would have more crews and more acreage. Uh, we're, we're down below half of our acreage this year. So wait a minute, you're growing half as many cantaloupes as you did in years past. That's correct. About what about other many. crops? Well, we, have, we typically grow tomatoes, uh, grain, uh, cotton, and, uh, and what about tomatoes, for example, this year? T tomatoes, I typically go 400 acres of uh, tomatoes, and this year we have zero. Zero? Zero. Why? Because we don't have enough water. We have to reserve our water for the crops that we have a bigger investment in, like, uh, like these cantaloupes. Now, these cantaloupes are going to go where? What percentage of the cantaloupes of the United States are grown here in this part of Fresno County? I would say about... 95% of the cantaloupes in the country are grown on the west side of Fresno County in the months of July through October. 95%? That's correct.